That one that switches over. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh. All right, gentlemen, if you'd stand slightly closer together. Okay. All righty. We are videotaping a sample tour for docent training. Alvin, what is your last name, please? McLeod. Alvin McLeod, who is an intern at the museum, and Michael Cobb, who is our curator. We're going to be doing a sample tour of the galleries in approximately a half an hour. And I'm going to count down five to one, and we can begin. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm Mike Cobb, curator of the Hampton History Museum. And we're standing with a visitor in our orientation uh, gallery, the first gallery that we step into in our tour of Hampton's history. Thousands of years of, of our past will be unveiled here in this, these galleries. This place, the idea here is to give people um, an idea of the overview of Hampton history. If you look on the walls, you'll see quotes. And there's some people who saw Hampton through the, through the centuries and left an impression. When you step in as a visitor and you step into our, our, our museum, you can have impressions of Hampton today in 2015 you're going to have some idea of this town and you're going to have it in your mind. What we have on the walls here are thoughts that people have. Uh, the first actually sums up entire Hampton's history. William Strachey, who was an Englishman who arrived here early in the 17th century, well, we're right. He had a, uh, Hampton, then called Kitty Can, was a delicate necessary seat for a city or chief fortification, a convenient harbor for craze, frigates, or fisher boats. Well, what that means is because I, uh, what would become Hampton was on the water uh, near the Atlantic Ocean, Chesapeake Bay, and Hampton Roads Harbor, and the Hampton River, Hampton would become a port. And when you have a port, you have a town, and when you have a town near the water, you often have a fort to defend it. The first fort built was Fort Algernon, and then Fort George, and later Fort Monroe. So in essence, those two lines are Hampton's history in one place. And as you go around, you see others, uh, 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 speaking of Hampton, Thomas Jefferson gets very excited uh, when the Revolutionary War approaches Virginia and the British ships come into the Hampton River and he says that this puts Virginia into a perfect frenzy. And you go along, you see Robert Hudgens, I mean his grandson. Robert Hudgens helped burn Hampton. Uh, as the smoke ascended to the heavens, I thought of how my little hometown was being made a sacrifice to the Grand God of War. And others, until you get to the end here, and what you see is Chris Kraft. In my lifetime, you know, I, people didn't think that people would go to the moon, but we certainly achieved that now and sort of take it for granted. But Chris Kraft, who was from Hampton, was a high-ranking NASA official, and he would write, the journey to the moon, which many thought to be, be no more than a wild fantasy a few decades ago, has now passed through the impossible to accomplish fact. So in essence, what you see in Hampton is from the sea to the stars, uh, Native Americans and the English thrived on the waterways here. And as the centuries would go by, eventually man would help plan the first steps into space and eventually to the moon here in Hampton. And that is the overview of our story. Next, we're going to step into the Native American gallery.